Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 162 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm back in the warehouse. I'm on jacket money. And you know what? I haven't been utilizing it enough, so I got myself a new jacket. New jacket, new me. Got it. Got a haircut as well. And uh, I, I didn't get to... U- he used different hair stuffs and it's way too high. And I don't like how it's styled, but that's all right. Because I'm going to do it myself at some point and it'll look pretty good. Uh, I'm in the warehouse. It is cold as fuck. It's currently raining. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Um, but, uh, dude, ha- had a very good week. Uh, I've, uh, <laughs> I've, I did a, uh, a collaboration So with uh, a few YouTubers, as you guys know. While I was in America, I did some collabs with a few YouTubers that I know uh, and have known for years. And a collaboration just came out with that I... <laughs> I recently did a video with I'm Alex. He's an English YouTuber. He's got 1.5 million subscribers. I've been friends with him over the internet, I think, since he's been at about 10,000 is when I first started watching him and talking to him. Great guy. Absolutely love him. And it's been amazing watching him grow from height to height and reach such a level of success. And um, he's uh, been, apparently, he told me that he's been watching me since he was, since 2014, which is crazy. So he's like one of the OG people watching me as well. So that's really cool. Um, When I was in America, he was in America too. And we finally got to do a collaboration together and it was a great moment for the two of us and then it came out and his fans fucking hated me. (laughs) They did not like this very long Australian man that says cunt. They didn't like me. Well, okay, when I say they didn't like me, the video got 350,000 views it has almost 30,000 likes and it only has 5,000 dislikes, which is, uh, it's not a bad ratio, but it is still 5,200 people that didn't like me at all because I was too mean and offensive. Uh, so basically what we did is we did a video on a couple that live in the Victorian era and, uh, The main complaints here is weirdly not that we were too mean. The main complaint that I'm seeing is that we were historically inaccurate. I think we made a few jokes about if they were really keen on living in the 1800s, they wouldn't have electricity. Apparently, you do have electricity in the Victorian era. I don't know. I don't really pick up a historian's textbook before I start a video. In future, before I do a video on anything that I don't have a PhD in, I'll study for eight years at university and I'll expect Alex to do the same. I'm sorry that we didn't comprehensively research a reality TV show about two dickheads who like to pretend they're in an era that they're not in. <laughs> <laughs> but next time we definitely will bring out the history books before we de- uh, before we decide to comment on it. So, uh, I thought the video was funny. Alex thought the video was funny. We talked about it afterwards and both of us went, fuck, I'm pretty sure the video was clearly all jokes. I don't know why people are angry about it. But let's um let's scroll down to the comments and see what Alex's fans thought about me. Also, uh, I just want to clear, clearly Not everyone hated me because I got 2,000 subscribers from it. I think the issue is Alex has quite a large fan base of young girls. And I don't know if you guys know anything about my content, if you know anything about my personality, anything about the type of humor or the jokes I tell on stage. It's not for young girls, okay? If you like K-pop, you might not enjoy a Lewis Spears show, you know? If you're learning how to apply makeup and, you, and, and you've just started with your starter brush, <laughs> if, if you're learning how to put on makeup and you're wearing a training bra, my stuff probably isn't for you, okay? I'm not your target demo because that's the thing. With YouTube, man... That's the only doubt. The, the, the amazing thing about YouTube is you can attract anyone. You can attract anyone to your YouTube videos. You can show anyone your content. And the worst thing about YouTube is you can show anyone your content and you can attract anyone to it because sooner or later, the bigger you get, 
you're going to attract cunts who don't like it. And that is what happened to me. So, scrolling down, top comment pinned by Alex is one that he wrote himself. It's an apology. <laughs> It's not an apology. It's just him clarifying that it's a joke. We're not trying to upset people. Uh, thanks for the feedback, but it's all in a good in uh, good spirits. So let's have a look at some of the comments here. Um, where are we? Okay, here's a good one. I felt like this heinous behavior was heavily influenced by Lewis. I don't like you with him, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so, top comment, Alex has been corrupted by my heinous behavior. And you know what? I might have to put that on my poster. I kind of felt like this heinous behavior was heavily influenced by Lewis. That's going to go on a poster somewhere. Put that on my fucking headstone. This heinous behavior was heavily influenced by Lewis. I got to say, I'm a proud man. Um... Okay, you can say this video was just a joke, but from what I've seen, not a lot of people are laughing. Uh, is 27,000 people uh, not a lot of people? Or are you talking about the other number, 350,000? I, I don't know which number you're talking about. Um, okay, this is a quote from the video. And look, <laughs> to be honest, this is probably is fair criticism against me. Because, okay, I'll just, I'll just read you what this person has written, which is also what I said. So it's a quote from the video. The woman says, When I was a little girl, I liked writing in a journal. And then I say, This fucking bitch... <laughs> Look, might not be the most intelligent or creative joke in the world, but when have you met a person who keeps a journal when they're 35 who also doesn't keep a gun under their mattress? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a, there's definitely a correlation. The only grown adult people that keep journals... Generally, you only find out about those journals when the police release them and it turns out they've been keeping track of all the people they've murdered. Like, I, I'm not saying that, that she's definitely a serial killer. I'm sure she's a lovely person. I'm just saying maybe we should dig up her backyard, see what we find, okay? We might find a couple of missing people. We might not find anything. Either way, you know, it's probably just a good warning sign, you know? I see you. I, that's what I reckon. If you keep a journal and you're 35, you have to get your backyard dug up for every five years, okay? That's the law if I'm in charge. I may never be in charge, so all you journal writing psychopaths are safe. But, you know, I'm, I'm definitely making a suggestion to Parliament if I ever get there. Anyone who keeps a journal, got to dig up their backyard every five years. <laughs> um, here's, another, here's a quote about the historical in inaccuracies uh, I said something on the along the lines of if these people were really serious about living in the Victorian era they would have the plague uh, apparently according to this comment the plague was in the 1400s so I'm about 400 years off there but hey man I'm just an Australian man commenting on English history. Really, if anything, that's Alex's job. He should have corrected me, all right? That's not me. That's him, okay? And anyway, I made a joke about polio. When was polio around? Surely that was in the 1900s. When was polio around? Oh, according to Google, polio is around at the moment thanks to anti-vaccine mothers on Facebook. Thanks, guys. Let's bring that one back. Okay, when was polio popular? The 1900s. Okay, there we go. That is one point of historical accuracy from me and zero for Alex. So really, the only complaints that should be levied at me is the reprehensible behavior and offensive comedy. That old cop. Historical inaccuracy? No, sir. Apart from the time I insisted several... Well, apart from the several times when I said that they don't have electricity. That was incredibly incorrect. <laughs> um, this is another top comment. 200 likes. Don't ever do a video with Lewis Spears again. <laughs> oh, fuck. 
These people aren't hurting anyone. They're pretty cute. I don't know. Your friend is too angry at the world. That's another thing that I don't really agree with. I And I get these comments every now and then is sometimes, okay, this might blow your mind. This might cause your frontal cortex to explode with fury. But every now and then, I'm going to make fun of someone because I feel like it. Not because they've done something wrong and I'm applying righteous fury to them. Some people think that for whatever reason on YouTube, you can only make a video where you make fun of someone who's like a fucking rapist or who rips off their fans or who films a body in the suicide forest. All of those things, you should definitely make videos on it. Absolutely, clown those people. But every now and then, okay, you're going to stumble across a video about a couple living in the 21st century wearing corsets and riding down the street in bikes that have wheels the size of human beings and then a tiny one behind it the size of a dog. And don't you dare fucking tell me that those people can't be made fun of. The dude is riding a bike from a hundred years ago. Get a new bike, man. Bro, People who ride bikes from 2019 are some of the most bullied people on planet Earth because they wear Lycra while they do it. Are you telling me that we can make make fun of cyclists from today's age, but making fun of cyclists who also ride a shit bike from 100 years ago? That's not fair game. I'm sorry. And to everyone who said this couple didn't deserve to be made fun of, I want you to search inside your soul. Search within yourself. Just have a proper think. If you saw a man and a woman walking down the street and the man was wearing a three-piece suit, a vest, a tie, he had a top hat on, he was walking down the street with a cane, he had a curly mustache and polio, you're telling me that you wouldn't at least, at the very least, think, just wear jeans. <laughs> just wear jeans. Hey, just take the top hat off and develop a personality instead. That's all. That's I, I bet you'd fucking think that shit. There's no way you would see someone cosplaying as if they live in the 19th century, 365 days out of the year, and not think to yourself at least once, gee, those cunts are a bit strange. Fuck, there's something off about those two. Oh, she keeps a dirt journal too? I'll get the shovel and call the police. Let's dig up her backyard. You're thinking at least one of those thoughts. What else? Let's have a look at the most recent comments. Um... This guy, Lewis, isn't just funny. He's just rude. I mean, I like to think that I'm both. I could be funny and rude. Um, then there's a bunch of uh, comments saying that it was funny. But, uh, you know, those ones don't get upvoted because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, that, that's the thing, right? Clearly, right? 355,000 cunts watch this shit. 27,000 of them said it was good enough to thumb it up. 5,000 out of 355,000. What is that percentage-wise? I'm definitely going to get this wrong. 355,000. Okay, so the number that I've come up with on my calculator is 17,000. I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to go out. I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I feel like I may not know how to do percentages in a calculator. <laughs> how do you do percentages? I don't even know. Whatever. What's well, less than five percent, right? Because if you add a hundred and then five, that's five percent. So three hundred. It's like maybe two point something percent of people didn't like it and that means that it's a bad video and it's an outrage let's keep going through these comments i'm uh 
thoroughly enjoying them. Lewis is a mood. His comments are amazing. He's such a mood. See? Some teenage girls like me. Because you know no grown dude is going mood. <laughs> this video is unacceptable, Alex. Delete it right now. <laughs> Would you fucking imagine if he actually did that because of this one chick's comment? Oh, this guy fucking likes K-pop. I better delete my uh, video. Oh my god, a reasonable comment. Why do some of why do so many of you have such thin skin? Just because the words are harsh doesn't mean the intent is. Chill the fuck out. Oh, thank you. I couldn't have said it better myself. Just because I say cunt doesn't mean I actually think you're a cunt, you know? In Australia, that's just a compliment. Hey, you're a mad cunt. You're a sick cunt. I would say that the the least common form of cunt usage in Australia is an insulting virgin. You know, it's generally a compliment or just a fun word to chuck in the middle of a sentence for no reason, cunt. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, it's, it's interesting what happens when, when um, people with vastly different audiences uh, collide together or, or when people get exposed to audiences that they would just never attract. See, that's, and this is a classic example of it, is just me being thrust upon a bunch of fucking underage girls, which sounds like a very fuck sentence to take out of context, but within, <laughs> within this situation makes sense. It's, you know what this is like? This is like if someone just put me on the wiggles. And then the next day, like I do the best set of all time, but at the end of the day, I did it in the middle of a fucking wiggle show and all these mothers are complaining. And you know what? Fair enough. I wouldn't want me on the wiggles. I wouldn't want me there either. Upsetting all the children, calling all the mothers cunts. No, no, no. I meant it in a good way. Too late. They're crying. It's so funny. I think a lot of it is also Americans don't realize how much Australian swear. This is like just the Australian culture being thrust on people that not ready for it at all. If you really think about it, this video is just me getting revenge for all of the fucking convicts they sent over to Australia. So, you know what? I win. Here we go. Why are you hating on a couple who enjoys their life? I don't know, because I thought it was pretty funny. Why are we only allowed to make fun of fucking Hitler? Um, what's with the Korean jokes? I think I made a few jokes about Korean slaves. Or maybe Alex did. I don't know. The point is, they're in the video. I definitely don't enjoy the Aussie guy. I normally enjoy yours and love you lots and watch you a lot. But this is the first video you've posted that made me realize you're a hypocrite. <laughs> I've just come in and nuked Alex's channel. Hey guys, I'm Lewis Spears and fuck your day. Amazing. I found it funny. As an Australian, swearing is sort of a second language. Yeah, I don't know. That is funny. Please don't let him in your videos. I think Lewis was leading and you were following. Yeah, that's... I, I think there would have been... There may have been a little bit of that where Alex was like, we should do a video together. And I was like, all right, take my hand. We're going down these stairs. And he goes, hang on a second. Where do the, where do the stairs go? And I turn the camera on. I go, never you worry. And Alex is like, oh, it's getting, it's getting pretty hot. Do we have to keep going down these stairs while the camera's running? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just keep coming down the stairs. It'll be great fun once we get to the bottom, I promise. And then it's just getting hotter and all of a sudden flames start shooting up. And he's like, oh, why are we going down these stairs, Lewis? Where are you taking me? I'm reading the comments. No one wants to go down these stairs. I'm like, trust me, mate. Once we get to the bottom of the stairs, it's going to be fucking worth it. Cunt. Korean slave jokes. This fucking bitch keeps a journal. I don't know, man. These stairs are getting pretty hot. It's melting my skin. No worries. Keep going. We're both skeletons now, and I'm just leading him down the stairs. And then he, he starts looking around. He goes, Lewis, there's demons. 
What's going on? Why are there demons and devils? Oh, these are just my mates. Come on, down the stairs. Come on. What? Just because you're English, you're not used to the heat. Let's keep going down the stairs. Lewis, I'm g- I, don't think, I don't think I like what's down here. There seems to be a lot of souls stuck down here. What's going on? There's a lot of awful lot of pitchforks down these stairs. I thought we were just going downstairs. Where are you leading us? Don't worry, guys. Come on, down the stairs. Uh, Lewis, I think I bumped into uh, Stalin. I, bu- I definitely bumped into Stalin, and he was he was he was having a fist fight with Hitler while demons threw lava at them. I don't I don't think I like it down here. And then we get to the bottom, and there's just a big sign that says hell. And I go, all right, Alex, what do you reckon? And he goes, ah, oh, me and all of my commenters fucking hate it. And I go, well, too late. You can't go back up. The stairs are gone. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> Welcome to Australian comedy, cunt. It's born in hell. <laughs> it is. It, it's quite interesting because, like, I think if you watch the video, me and Alex, we talked about it afterwards. It's a great video. I think it's it's quite a funny video, and it's fairly obvious that, like, I don't hate these people for dressing up like idiots. It's just funny to make fun of them for dressing up like idiots. Fucking every day I get comments for the way that I dress because I generally dress like I'm about to shoot up a school. I mean, today I'm not. Today I look like I might put a, a, I might put something in your drink, you know. But still, it's not the best image, but it's the only image I have, you know. Bit of salt bay, but instead of, what is it? Rohypnol bay <laughs> when you go to the bathroom. That's how I'm dressed. Although no, I don't think I would have a very successful Instagram account, would I? No one's following Rohypno Bay. I mean, his content's so boring, he puts you to sleep. <laughs> um, but I thought it was a good video, so did Alex. And what's interesting is I have about 300... How many videos have I released on my channel? Let's have a look. How many videos do I have? Well, it doesn't say on my phone. Let's say, with the podcast, conservative estimate, 500 videos. Bro, I've said some worse shit than that. I've said some heinous stuff. I've said some stuff that even I look back on and go, gee, I should probably unlist that one. And then I go, ah, fuck it. Bring on the journalists. That video for me was quite tame, but I guess I corrupted Alex. It's interesting, though, because I also did a video with uh, Atozy that went out on his uh, channel. Exact same format, exact same camera, exact same room, exact same person, me, doing the same type of humor. And you know what? His fans fucking loved it. Like, if you look at the comments on uh, Atozy... Lewis Spears. Here we go. His top comment, also an apology, but for the mic quality, not for my (laughs) humour. And um, top comment, this comedian is pretty damn funny. Definitely get Lewis back. He was great. I need more of this Atozy x Lewis content. And then another comment, oh heck yeah, cunty matey, top 10 anime crossovers. Here's a better title, Atozi being mystified by an Australian for 15 minutes. It's so, it's so interesting that how you can be the same person doing the same type of humor, but if you get exposed to the wrong type of audience, you're like the worst comedian ever. It's like... No one forced you into the restaurant and made you eat the food. So why are you complaining? It's like, hey, welcome. You know what it is? It just comes down to free content. Cunts getting fucking possessive and entitled over their free shit. Ah, oh, you gave me three 15 minute long videos a week for three years. And there was one that I didn't like. And I paid nothing for it. 
You've got to delete your channel. <laughs> oh, fuck. But anyway, I've got a video with Alex coming out for my channel. Hopefully, hopefully you guys will enjoy the stuff that we've made because I've got to tell you, it's the exact same vein of content. So we'll see. Hopefully I won't wake up to <laughs> you. <laughs> Never have Alex on your channel again. He didn't say cunt enough. <laughs> Maybe it'll be the opposite problem. You guys will be like, Hey, why didn't Alex make any jokes about polio? What's the, what the fuck is this? This is bullshit. Why did, he, why did he not make fun of this cup? Why didn't he wish death upon this young couple? This video sucks. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's very funny. It's like... It, it, and it's, it's, it's really brought out, like me and Alex were talking about it. It's like a, such a vocal minority. 355,000 people. 5,000 of those people didn't like it. And if you read the comments, that means that it was a, the worst video ever. And it's like, dude, it's not. 27,000 people loved it. Which is what? More than five times that didn't like it, including all of the people that didn't bother to leave a like. That's the thing. I feel like people who like videos, they don't leave comments because you just go, that was funny. Move on to the next one. I'll watch the next one. And then they grab the t-shirt while they see the show. Fuck, can you hear that rain? That's crazy, huh? Welcome to the rainy podcast. Anyway, I'm, I've been ranting about this too much. It's, uh, it's just interesting how... Uh, it's like food. You know, I think that's the thing with comedy. People don't realize that there's genres of it and some stuff just isn't to your taste. Like, I hate spicy food. My girlfriend loves it. But I don't go to the chef. Ah, never make spicy food again, you fucking animal. How could you? It's like, yeah, I just won't eat that spicy food. But I'll let you make it because I know a lot of other people enjoy it. I'm literally sitting in a fucking shed while it rains and it's nine degrees debating with imaginary nine-year-old girls. My life sucks. <laughs> what am I doing? Hey, um, on a, uh, how long are we going for here? Oh, good. 27 minutes of me yelling about YouTube comments. Welcome to the Speared Sundays podcast. Enjoy your stay. Time to move on. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm trying to think of what to do with my background here. So you will notice that I've moved the set of the podcast because I've got something going on in the old area that's uh, amazing. And uh, I think it's going to happen next month, but we'll see. Uh, it's coming and it's going to blow your fucking mind and it's going to change comedy in Australia forever. And uh, yes, I said it and yes, I stand by it. But anyway, I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do with the background of the Speared Sundays podcast. I want to have like a set. I don't want it to look like a fucking shed because let's be honest, that sucks more than the video that I did with Alex. <laughs> um, so what I was thinking... I've been looking up online. I can get a really big canvas that's going to cover the whole uh, behind me and it'll be big enough for when I zoom out and I have a guest here as well. Um, so uh, I'm, I want your ideas. What should we have as the background? Should I make something completely new? If so, what should I have on it? Should I make it uh, look like a wall, like a, like a brick wall or tin or a spaceship or like I can do anything. I have graphic designers. I've got Matteo who can draw. I can do whatever the fuck we want. What should we do for the background of Speared Sundays? If you're watching it on YouTube, leave a comment. If you're watching it on uh, anywhere else, send me a DM on Instagram. Leave a comment on Facebook. You know how to reach me. <clears throat> I want to know. I want your input. Um, also, uh, I have started an Instagram account for the Speared Sundays podcast and it is posting clips uh, and memes and all that kind of stuff. 
uh, very, very regularly. It has 800 followers already, I think, which is amazing. And uh, I want to I wanna bump it up to 5,000 followers. Can we get it to that? That'd be fucking amazing. Go and follow Speared Sundays on uh, Instagram. It's posting all of the best clips uh, and uh, all of the memes as well because uh, I've been getting all of them but I don't know where to post them because I don't want to spam too much on my main. So uh, all you Speared Sundays listeners, go and check out the Instagram, give it a follow and suggest what clips we should post on there. At the moment, we've been posting clips every day just so we get a little, little backlog. We're probably not going to post them every single day because I want to get a bunch more memes and a bunch of... Uh, uh, original content that you guys make because I do get it and I love seeing it so I want to post it somewhere so check out the Speared Sundays Instagram I'm also holding like a bunch of polls and uh, suggestion forms and all that kind of stuff through the stories I think that's gonna I've been trying to figure out a way to properly engage with the podcast listeners about only podcast stuff because not everyone does listen and uh, it's gonna be Instagram so I'm really stoked about that uh, so go and give it a follow. It's Speared Sundays on Instagram. What else do I want to talk about here? Oh, it's so good. You can't see, but I've got a giant whiteboard and uh, I've just, I'm just writing shit on it. It's so fucking good. Um, dude, I had... Okay, here's the thing. I'm so shitty at my fucking editor and I know he's watching this and, and he already knows it's coming because he deserves it. So I'm away, I'm away for a month in America and uh, Keelan, who edits and uh, all that stuff... He's editing away, doing an amazing job as always, okay? But he has, uh, he's got a girl in Canberra, so he was working from Canberra. He's like, can I work from Canberra? I'm like, dude, you can do it from the moon as long as you send me my fucking videos. I don't care. Go for it. So he goes to Canberra. Amazing. And he, and he gets everything done from his laptop. Oh, that's the drain. I thought someone was trying to break in. Anyway... He's in Canberra, editing away for the month. I come home and he's still in Canberra. But that's right, he doesn't work on Mondays. So I get home from America. It's been a couple of days. I get over my jet lag and I go, you know what? The only thing I want to do today is get into the warehouse and make some fucking videos. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm all energized. I'm like going to get back to the warehouse, going to get back home, going to make some shit for you guys to watch. So that's what I do. I get on the bus. I don't pay for it because only bitches pay for the bus. I get off the bus. He goes, you've got to touch on your bikey. And I go, fuck off, mate. And I, don't, I didn't actually do that because um, I'm not a cunt. Uh, uh, contrary to what I'm Alex's fans <laughs> would want, like you to believe, I do have a conscience, but I won't pay for the bus. Anyway, I get to the warehouse, okay? And I'm like, great. I'm so motivated. No, sorry. I get off the bus and I walk for 20 minutes to get to my warehouse. Really have to use the bathroom. I have to piss, but that's all right because I'm going to get into my warehouse. I'm going to unlock my door, going to grab the key, going to run to the bathroom, going to piss. Then I'm going to get to work. I'm super excited. I'm going to get to work. So I walk 20 minutes. I think to myself, should I have a nature wee? And then I look at my watch, 10 a.m. on a Monday. I don't think so. Don't want to get arrested today. Just want to get to work. Want to get to the bathroom. So that's what I do. Get to the warehouse. I'm busting. But that's all right. Because there's a bathroom just around the corner. All I got to do is get the key. I open the door. I come in. Put my shit down. And I'm at that. I'm at the emergency phase where your brain goes, Oh, you've opened the door. That means that I can piss now. And you go, No, it doesn't. You got to wait till I get to the bathroom. And your brain goes, I, I reckon I'm going to piss now. I think I'm going to piss in my pants. That's what I want to do. No, you're not allowed to piss until we get to the bathroom because, and then he goes, hey man, I've got uh, 600 million years of evolution on my side. You've only started pissing in uh, toilets for like 23 years. So I think I'm going to piss in my pants. And then you just got to have that fucking battle. I'm at that phase, right? We all I got to do is get to the bathroom, but it's no worries. I got a bathroom key i turn around put my shit down and i reach up to where we keep the bathroom key it's not there bathroom key's not there that's all right i'll just have a look around having a look around i check keelan's desk it's not there i check my desk it's not there i check underneath the toilet paper it's not there either i go that's all right 
No worries. I'll just text Keelan. Ask him where the key is. He'll know. He had it last. He was here. Last person who was here was him. He used it. Used the bathroom. To get into the bathroom, you have to use the key. So he's probably put the key somewhere else. In the warehouse. And he'll know where it is. And then I can find it. Then I can use it to unlock the door. And use the bathroom. Text Keelan. Hey, man. Where's the bathroom key? Text me back. Little message pops up. He's typing. See the bubbles and the three dots? I go, oh, I'm about to find out where the key is. That's good because I need a wee. Little bubbles. Gee, these gee, these bubbles are showing up for a long time. If all he needed to text was underneath the cushion, probably would have got that text by now. Looks like he's thinking. He's either thinking or writing a very long series of instructions on how to find the key like it's fucking Airbnb. It's in the lockbox. The code is 2134. The lockbox is attached to a bike around the corner. To get there, you must walk 30 meters, then turn left, then call this woman, a gypsy. She will cast a spell. If the spell is successful, the lock will appear. If unsuccessful, you will never have children again. <laughs> Text bubbles. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I've got to piss. Text pops up. My text says, Hey, mate. Where's the bathroom key? His text says, Oh, fuck. It's in my wallet. And I'm in Canberra. This cunt took the bathroom key interstate. Took it out of the fucking state. I read that shit. I'm like, oh, great. The toilet key's in fucking Canberra. And I need a piss now. <laughs> so the very first thing I did returning into this warehouse was grab the extra large subway cup that Keelan left on his desk and I pissed in it in my own warehouse because the guy who edits my podcast took the bathroom key to fucking Canberra. And that was how I started my day. Was pissing in a subway cup. And guys, when it's the middle of the day and you're in an incredibly busy warehouse full of employees walking around... And you're inside a warehouse that has no sink, no drain, no toilet. And you're stuck there holding an extra large, clear plastic cup of your own piss. And you know that you've just got a text from your landlord going, Luis, I will come and see you very soon. I'm glad you are back. We should have a talk. And you think one of two things is going to happen here. Either he's going to walk in while I have my dick out and I'm filling up my clear subway cup with my own piss thinking that I'm about to drink from it. Or I'm going to walk outside my warehouse, which I cannot check if the coast is clear because I have no windows on the door side, and I'm going to walk straight into him holding what at first may appear to be a very large cup of apple juice, but as soon as it spills all over him when we crash together, becomes very apparent it's human piss. That's what's going to happen to me on my first day back at work. So <laughs> thank you very much to Keelan for taking my fucking toilet key to Canberra. <laughs> Dude, that's got to be top 10 saddest moments of my life. Pissing into an extra large Subway cup and then tipping it into the bin in broad daylight. And then and then having fucking piss bin until bin day on Thursday. Fucking four days of piss bin. Human piss bin. Wasn't good. Should have docked his pay. Dog. <laughs> oh, fuck. How long are we going for here? 
40 minutes. See, I can I can rant about YouTube comments for half an hour, but an enthralling story about pissing in a subway cup will only go for 10 minutes. Sorry, guys. Is there anything else that I want to talk about? So much stuff, but we're not going to get to it. Let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? Um, if uh, you don't know, <clears throat> if you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're a uh, if you're a returning uh, listener, fuck you. <laughs> um, miscellaneous bit at the end is a part of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by the listeners. If you have a life uh, advice story, life advice question, or an interesting story you would like to tell me, send it to podcast at loosespears.com and we'll get back to you very soon. Um. Okay, where are we? I'm having a look through my little emails. Need advice on how to sabotage sabotage slash deal my boss. How do you deal someone? G'day, cunt. My name is Tom. I've recently started working in a new job as a gardener. Everyone around me is really nice except for the head gardener. How many fucking plants does this cunt have? This wouldn't be... Uh, sorry if to any I'm Alex listeners out there. If you heard me say cunt, I do apologize. <laughs> it's, it's because uh, I, I'm an incredibly malevolent, evil person from hell. Uh, it's just how I talk. Everyone around me is really nice except for the head gardener. This wouldn't be a problem. However, I am basically his lackey and working to become his partner. Since I'm a couple of years younger than the other gardeners, he becomes such a micromanager, analyzing my every move, and he's also hypercritical. He ragged on me for 10 minutes, or alternatively, devil's advocate here, as I am the devil, clearly, if you read I'm Alex's comment section, uh, maybe you just suck at your job, mate. Maybe you suck at gardening. I don't know how you'd be bad at that. You missing a couple of weeds, huh? <laughs> he ragged on me. He ragged on at me for 10 minutes, for a two-second mistake. Even with positive, flawless ideas, he'll find a problem just to undermine me. This guy is basically a walking miscellaneous bit at the end. I also get frustrated at his casually misog- at, at his casually misogynistic behavior. And if I didn't know any better, predatory behavior. But hey, if I whinge about everything, then I'll turn into this old anal cunt. Any advice on how to sabotage slash deal with him better. You suck at spelling, bro. I hope you, I hope you garden better than you spell, cunt. <laughs> Bear in mind, I'm very polite, apologetic, and reciprocate his shit comedy. All feedback appreciated. Have a shit one. I mean, I've got a couple of ideas. You, you may have come to the right area. You may have come to the right person if you really want to fuck with him. I don't know how possible this is, but uh, I would uh, I would assume... I would assume, I would assume that uh, gardeners, they've got to control weeds, right? So something that they often have to do is spray weed killer in a very controlled way onto weeds and not onto, say, prize roses. Well, perhaps there is a way to put a hole in the bottom of the weed killer sprayer. So every time he uses it, sprays out the bottom. Gets all over the fucking roses he was trying to protect. Perhaps that's an option. Another option could be... Gee, I don't know much about the gardening industry. You could take his hat so he gets sunburned. And that's all I've got. That is all I have. I'm pretty stumped. Hey, if you have any uh, suggestions on how to get revenge on a gardener... Why don't you send them into uh, Spearhead Sundays uh, on Instagram and I'll post the best ones on my story. <laughs> Just DM me. I'll put the screenshots up. How do, we, how do we sabotage a gardener? Let me know. Um, <clears throat> oh, here we go. This sounds like a good wholesome story. Dropping acid and punching policemen. <laughs> G'day, Lewis. My name, these stories are always either incredibly amazing or horribly shit and you feel sorry for the person who tells it. I'm, I'm feeling on this one, we may get a little bit of both. Let's get into it. G'day, Lewis. My name's Blake and I'm from good old Geelong. Trust me, mate. I knew that from the fucking subject line. <laughs> Dropping acid and punching policemen, it's either going to be Geelong or Perth. There's only two places where that behavior comes from. And uh, there, I'm, I'm going to be doing shows in both of them and I would love to sell a lot of tickets. So I will uh, trash them not very much. 
On my 18th birthday, three years ago, a bunch of my friends arranged a surprise so party of sorts. Uh, we were going to take a... So is it really a surprise party if you helped organize it, you fucking dickhead? Is that what a surprise party is in Geelong? Because you organize it and then you have, you've done so much fucking acid that you forget that you booked the flights. You get the email the day before and you go, Oh, surprise! From me! Surprise myself! Let's go punch cops in Sydney! <laughs> Loosebeers.com slash giglist to find out about all future Geelong shows. Not that you would remember buying tickets to them, but hey, surprise yourself! <laughs> All right. Uh, we were going to take a trip to Sydney, stay in an Airbnb and get wildly fucked up. So they planned this trip for months and we got some drugs that were awaiting our arrival at a pre-booked Airbnb. So we get to Sydney and, and immediately go to the Airbnb to get ready for a night of being a minor annoyance to the fine people of Sydney. Love it. We, we get all showered and fresh and my friends decide it's a good time to drop acid. I feel like acid is so not a birthday party drug. Like, that's definitely... Like, I get coke. I get... Uh, I mean, that's kind of it. Like, if you, if you go on birthday drugs, if you're going to a nightclub, it's kind of like alcohol and coke. Maybe weed. But it's not... Like, weed doesn't scream birthday to me. Acid... Definitely doesn't scream birthday to me. But you do you, man. Do acid. See, here's the thing. All these people are going to go, No, nah, man, acid's the perfect fucking drug for birthdays. It mixes so well. Can't. I'm reading a story about a dude who punched cops on his birthday. Is it really a good mix? <laughs> At least for this man. Where are we? We get to Sydney and go to an Airbnb, blah, blah, blah. Got acid. Time to drop acid. I, of course, being the devout Christian that I am, gobbled those shit up, gobbled that shit up like Tic Tacs. A couple of my friends also had some LSD and were peer pressuring me hardcore to take it as well. Ah, don't mix drugs. Doesn't make me feel good. Don't mix two drugs. Doesn't matter what it is. Please don't do it. Not a good idea, ever. Nah, no, man, nothing wrong with a bit of heroin and a bit of coke. Um, after the hardcore druggers, uh... In my friend group, finished doing lines. Okay, so you're mixing acid, lines, and cocaine. No wonder you were punching cops. You probably thought they were fucking dragons. We ended up in a nightclub and my mates just kept ordering tequila and alcohol. Bro, you're lucky you survived your fucking birthday by the sounds of it. Um, I'm sounding like a concerned mother in this one. <laughs> Don't do drugs, but say cunt heaps. <laughs> um, uh... My mates kept ordering tequila shots for me. Uh, and who was I to turn down a birthday gift? I mean, if you want another birthday. Oh, hello. How you going? I'm just finishing off miscellaneous bit at the end. Would you like to join me? Sure. Cool. Jazz is here. Hang on. Let me plug her mic in. One sec. All right. Jazz is here. Hello, Jazzy. How are you? Hi. I'm good. My voice is a little bit hoarse. I was just in the car singing the soundtrack of Chicago. Have you seen that movie? Is that one where all those bitches go to jail and yeah, for, for some reason they have bondage outfits no. instead of oh, jail yeah. outfits? Well, as every good musical does. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great movie, actually. It's a really good movie. I was seeing the one where they're all talking about why they murdered their husbands. Oh, so what, yeah. So That's why it, women baby. like it because they, they fantasize whenever, they're, whenever, they're, whenever their man puts dishes in the dishwasher, but... They don't scrape them clean first. They're like, I'm going to watch Chicago on a loop. He had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's your birthday on Saturday as well. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do you know what day it is? Well, today? yesterday. Yeah, it's Friday. Oh, well, yeah, yes. This is coming out on Sunday, though. So it's Sunday. It's Sunday. So yesterday was your birthday. Mm. Did you have a good birthday? Oh, it was alright. Could have been better. What? Well, it's not my fault. I just, I'm hard to buy for. You don't even know what I've got you yet. <laughs> yeah, but has it ever been good? Yes! Remember. Remember, here's the thing. You're giving me a surprise this year. Yeah. And we both know that that never ends well. Oh, uh, the first the first big surprise I got, a, we almost broke up because you had a panic attack. I didn't have a panic attack. I had a, <laughs> I had a grumpy attack. Because you're like, yeah, I want to know what it is. Okay, so... On my birthday, we hadn't eaten and it was watch like... Her, watch, her, watch her try and make her sound reasonable. I'm just going to explain this logically. I'm not going to okay. emphasize anything or be emotional about it. Okay. 
It was on my birthday. You just tell them what happened and we'll let them decide. We slept in. We yep. hadn't had anything to eat. It was about 1 or 2 p.m. Yep. Maybe later. Uh-huh. And you didn't tell me what we were doing. How old, how old were you? Were you... 19. 19? So yeah. you weren't four years old? They don't even know what happened yet. I'm just saying that you had the ability to feed yourself. No, here's the thing. I'm a woman that yep. never... It, you never stop getting hangry. Oh, okay. Right. Mm. So, yeah, that was my fault. So... Yeah. If Didn't you wanted yourself. someone who Oops. <laughs> Oops, sorry. You have to feed your girlfriend I regularly. I haven't bathed intervals. in a month. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> what? Well, I'm just saying, bathing, eating, all general human things that human beings are expected to do for themselves. No, you don't understand. A woman not eating for like 12 hours is basically like a guy not being able to masturbate for a month. Yeah, that's true. So what you're saying is when they get really horny and they assault women, that's totally reasonable. Well, if they haven't eaten for 12 hours. <laughs> but Your Honour, I was hungry. <laughs> you don't I was understand. Hangry. I was angry. Was it, what's the male version? Is Borny? Have you heard of that? Bored and horny? It's a dangerous combination. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Um, no, but you took me to the city. You didn't tell me where we were going. We got off at Flinders Street. Yeah, because we... I was, I told you I'm going to surprise you for your birthday. No, you, I was so hungry and I was complaining the whole way. Like, are we going to get food? You go, yeah, yeah, we'll eat after. I'm like, well, I'm really hungry now. So and... then I was like, okay, you pick a restaurant, order food. I'll come back with your gift. He was going to leave me alone on my birthday when I was hungry. Oh! I didn't want you to leave me. To, that's so rude. No, if you want to have food now, then we both have food now, and then we go get the present. I had already Why do I even have to come? Because I'm a human being Why do I have himself? to come to get my own present? That's your job as the surpriser. You get the present. I do not have to go on what a journey, what on a hobbit's what journey, to what Mordor Ooh, to get my own present. Happen next. Well, you left me on a bench all by myself for 30 minutes uh, and I that, ended up crying. Before that, you <laughs> ended up yelling at me and crying in the street and cracking it. I was so hungry, Lewis. Yep. Sorry, we cut out. The camera hasn't eaten today. Um, okay, so this email. The subject line is dropping acid and punching policemen. What's wrong with the people who email you? Uh, they listen to me, which clearly, you if you listen to I'm Alex's fans, is not a good idea. The people who email me are like, I want to know what you think about having like an inter-religious relationship. Like, how's that going to work? Or like, someone emailed me and asked me about like split, split, split brain consciousness they, for a podcast question. Split brain consciousness? Yeah, they've done Does this thing. Does that have thing. anything to do with punching cops? No, but oh. if you cut the brain down the mid center in the corpus callosum, you end up with two separate consciousnesses within the same brain. But aren't they both retarded? No, they're not. Like, they're fully formed and they can have different opinions. So it, it poses a question if all you have to do is split it. Does that mean that we, like, what's the nature of consciousness? No, that's just Hannah Montana. It's the best of both worlds. What? She gets to be Hannah Montana and then she gets to be whoever the fuck she was when she but wasn't no, famous. But no, it wouldn't be. That would be like Two-Face. Why would she choose Hannah Montana? That's... Yeah, that's true. That'd yeah. be like if when she puts the wig on, she's like a serial murderer. When she takes it off, she's just a regular girl. Yeah, I don't know. I've anyway, killed 17 my women. point is that <laughs> 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 my point is that um, tell me your inferior listeners' <laughs> gladly advice question. Um, so it's his birthday. He goes to Sydney. He's from Geelong. This explains the whole oh. story. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he gets to a nightclub. He has done acid, which is a weird drug to do on your birthday. LSD. Oh, is that, is that a birthday thing? Have you got me acid for my birthday? No, I've got LSD. You're giving me a surprise. Oh, I don't want acid. LSD. I want acid. LSD, cocaine, mm. uh, and now he's drinking tequila at the nightclub. Oh, cool. That's my favorite drink. So he may die. Yeah. Um, okay. I ended up sinking about 12 shots of tequila and then about half a bottle of cherry vodka. This guy is, uh, could be Superman. I just don't... Well, like, maybe... Okay, what do you think happens in this story? He's done, like, every drug imagine, every upper imaginable. I think he wakes up and realises that he only ever did acid and everything else was a hallucination. <laughs> I don't think that's how acid works. Um, it would be, like, 
it's basically just so much brain. Like his brain might actually get fried. Yeah. Like it might actually cook like an egg. It had become even more egg. fried than it did from living in Geelong. Loosebeers.com <laughs> 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 slash gig list. I'm coming to Geelong. Um, uh, at this point, the drugs and alcohol both kicked in fully and I was just stumbling around on the dance floor making a solid beeline for a girl. I scuttled... I scuttled oh, that's dangerous. Not good. I sc- I've done every drug imaginable. Now I want that. <laughs> are, you sure, are you even sure it was a girl? Yeah, probably. Was it a stool? <laughs> <laughs> I scuttled over to her like a goblin and tried my best pickup pick up lines such as, fuck your sexy... How about you come home with me and the boys? <laughs> you know, all the classics. Ah, oh, great. She didn't seem to like my propositions and stared at me awkwardly until some chick pulled the, Oh, Sarah, there you are. Let's go talk. I love girls. They're so smart. To rescue her from me. That's What a hero. Uh, by this point, I was seeing... Do you, guys, does, do you guys teach each other that or is it just instinctual? Just... The cock blocking shit. I don't know. I don't have friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, by this point, I was seeing the craziest shit. The walls, uh, the walls were <laughs> were breathing. All the people were melting. My vision was pulsing, and I was throwing up like a soft serve machine in the corner of the club. Eventually, they tried to kick me out, but I was so pissed that they had interrupted my throw-up session, I went off my nut, so they called the police. Hey, leave me alone! I'm vomiting here! Mm-hmm. Um, this is written very weird. Yeah, what was he on when he wrote it? Uh, probably just... the. Uh, I think he was just never the same after well, you this get, night. You get to the end of the email and you're like, okay, and then I started writing you this email. <laughs> <laughs> When the police showed up, I complied at first and followed them outside as my mates all waved and cheered and followed me. One of my friends yelled out, Yo, he's done nothing wrong. Let him go. (laughs) Which snapped something in my brain that was just screaming, Yeah, you've done nothing wrong. Fuck this shit. And next thing I know, I was swinging. (laughs) Yeah, see, that's the fucking boys revving you up too much. Yeah, you know what? Two plus two is five. Start throwing fists in the classroom, even though you're wrong. Um, next thing I know is swinging. I caught one cop who had his back to me, and then during the time they were restraining me, I elbowed another in the ribs and kicked the first dude in the chest before they pepper spray me. Dude, that's, this guy is John Wick. He's mm. taken out three cops at once while they're arresting him. He's fucking John Wick. Do you, you don't really approve of this story. I just, I'm, I'm not sure what is going to happen at this story, which I didn't see coming. <laughs> it's like, I, I reread the first paragraph. I told you I the took, subject line, did acid and punch cops. Now we're just really but reading the details. he didn't just details. do acid, he did everything. Everything. And now we're just finding out what ha- happened. Like, should we be glorifying this behavior? Oh, no, this guy is a horrible person. He lives in Geelong. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, so what, come on, it's, it's going to be a long. What right, actually right. happened? Okay. So he's punching they some They pepper cups. sprayed me, which really kicked off the hallucinations, and my entire <laughs> vision was blinding, flashing colours, like someone was shining a strobe light in my eyes. Then everything just went real dark and real quiet. Yep. Next thing I know, so he got knocked out, I'm sitting in a cell with another dude who had pissed his pants and was sitting in a puddle of his own piss. It's probably just an out-of-body experience, bro, and that was you. You were sitting next to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and you would piss yourself and shit yourself. Uh, the smell of piss made me projectile mud at the wall. <laughs> so now you've pissed yourself, you shit yourself, Poor and you're vomiting. Poor person who's got to fucking clean this cell. Oh, man. Uh, since this has been long enough, I'll wrap it up with the outcome. Basically, I spent a few weeks in prison before I was let go. The policeman I hit luckily didn't file any serious charges, and I went back home and got my ass kicked by my mother as soon as I walked through the door. <laughs> Your poor mum. Never touch drugs again. Keep up the funny shit. <laughs> You're only a step away from greatness, my man. I see big things for you, my dude. Hey, bro, wish I could say the same. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wouldn't trust anything that he's seeing. Yeah, true. I mean, anything I don't... Anything you're... I see great things for you, my man. I'm, like, I'm sure you see a lot of other things, too. <laughs> like wizards and spells and breathing and walls. Aliens and aliens. Thanks for the email, man. It sounds was, like you had yeah, a great birthday to remember. It was interesting. Yeah. I guess you go hard or go home, right? Fuck yeah. yeah. Had a good night. Got a good story out of it. What more could you want? Probably well, not a criminal record, but... 
or Can't maybe win them all. in my personal experience, doing one drug at a time is generally more than enough. Well, that's what I said. Don't mix them. You may die. Yeah, well, they're good enough for people get, to get addicted to one at a time. Like, that guy made his own personal version of meth. Yeah. That was just an episode of Breaking Probably. Bad where he <laughs> had his own product. Except instead of selling it, he just inhaled all of it. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's the end of the episode. Thank uh, you very much for listening. Oh, don't we have, like, an advice question? That was just story time. Story time with Lewis. Uh, there was no advice. We've already gone way over. There's no time. Send me uh, an email to at podcast at loosebeers.com if you need some advice or if you have a fuck story about you punching cops. Love to hear it. <laughs> and uh, make sure you follow Spearhead Sundays on Instagram and uh, DM me what I should do with the backdrop because uh, I'm about to put some money into it, about to make it look nice uh, like a set so it looks all professional. Jasmine has a podcast. I do have a podcast called Ravenous. Yep. It's, let me ask you, Lewis. How many long-form content on your podcast have you done recently? How, How many long-form content have I Correct. done on my podcast? It's a very intellectual podcast. What, you, what does that mean? Long, I mean, I How yelled much? about YouTube comments for 27 no, minutes. No, have you had any ongoing jokes recently? Uh, what do you mean? I guess so. No, you haven't. I say can't a lot. <laughs> yeah, we all laugh at that. No. There we go. Um... I was just wondering, because I was just thinking on the car on the way over here. I was comparing yeah. and contrasting uh -huh. which podcast was better. It's obviously mine. Uh, do you yell for 27 minutes about nine-year-old girls writing mean comments about you? I don't think so. I think you guys know where, where you are, <laughs> and you're here with the quality content. Actually, I recorded an episode yesterday where I, turned, I transformed into the She-Hulk for the entire episode and was just very angry. Is that because I texted you a picture of the She-Hulk? Not yes. <laughs> I would no. I was already on a rage kick, and then you text me a picture of a She Hulk, but it helped. You'll oh, I'll give you a good comic. New Avengers by Bendis. She beats the fuck out of all the Avengers. Well, yeah, it's the Hulk. The She Hulk. Well, you think that just because it's a She Hulk, she couldn't beat Hangry the fuck Hulk. out of all of it? Yeah, that's what I was gonna Some, say. Someone probably tried you're, to give her a guitar for her birthday. You're lucky that I wasn't the She Hulk on my birthday at <laughs> that time, because otherwise you would be dead. <laughs> well. That's the end of the podcast, guys. Check out Jasmine's. Follow Speared Sunders on Instagram. Send me a message there. What should I do with the backdrop? What do you reckon I should do with it? I don't think you can do anything because there's there's shit on the wall. I there's... can get a. I, I looked it up. I can get a big, giant canvas. A can? Where are you going to hang the canvas? You've got. It's literally a a hose, a fireman's hose. Yeah, I can hang it from the, the from the roof. I can get dad. To oh, drill do you some mean shit. a printed canvas? Printed canvas. Oh, that won't look good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it will. I hate I hate printed backdrops. It has to be like a wall with 3D stuff on it. You well, need to... I don't have 10 grand on a, to spend on a wall. Why don't you just plate it with gold? Okay, guys, don't don't message me on Instagram. We've got it. I'm going to plate it with gold. I'm doing a GoFundMe, <laughs> and we're going to make it happen. And you have to get some girls for also gold. All right, follow Speared Sunnies. Check out Jazz. Goodbye. Have a shit one. Egg. <laughs>